let me begin by asking you a very simple question. Mm -hmm. What is what is witchcraft? Yeah, um, yeah. Many people would like to find out what witchcraft is, mm -hmm. and um, when you ask somebody that are you a witch, the person will say no. Yeah, no. So it has been the belief, and listening to the, the belief that some people have some supernatural power to be able to kill others, to be able to affect the lives of others, to be able to cause the failures of, of others. That is people's belief. And they even think that even those witches can eat people, they can drink blood and uh, those sort of things. So it's a belief system within people's mind. A belief system? Yeah. Let is, me it put it. is it real? Yeah, many is it something say, that exists? Yeah. Um, often I wouldn't like to just come and say that witchcraft is real or not. Unless I've taken you through a process until we come to the end. But most of the things that people are, are saying are all superstitious. Most of them. You take it that um, over 95% of what they are saying are all uh, uh, superstitious. When I was conducting a, a research mm -hmm. on witchcraft, sorcery, and exorcism, what I realized is that um, whenever I was told a story, I would follow the story up to the end. Before getting to the end, about 95 of what I heard were all additions. The main issue would not be as I was informed initially. Mm. Yeah, and I think that has wasted the superstitious aspect of witchcraft that people bring out. Because uh, when someone hears something, the person will not take time to examine it. But once he or she hears from one person, he picks it up and then begin to spread it. And that is the difficulty that we are having with our belief of witchcraft. Mm. And, mm -hmm. yes, I will even say that now the concept that we are having now is actually not witchcraft. What is it? It's what I call witch demonology. It's a combination of the beliefs of witchcraft and demonology. Mm. You know, demonology was the aspect that came from the West. Mm -hmm. And, and what was prevailing our system was witchcraft. But because of the advent of Christianity in, in Ghana and many places, a demonology aspect came from the West to us. So we've picked part of demonology, added it to part of our witchcraft, and combined the two. And that is the practices that is going on today. So <laughs> spirits exist. Witches exist. Is that the case? No, uh, I'm not considering witchcraft a spirit. I'm not... Con uh, con uh, 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 witchcraft is, supp is supposed to be an inherent power. You see, when we are talking of spirit, demons are considered as spirit. Demonology mm -hmm. is considered as something that comes from spirit. A demon that inhabits somebody, a spirit that can come and dwell in somebody... And sometimes leave the person for some time. When it comes to a traditional religion, where a spirit takes possession of, let's say, someone, mm -hmm. a man or a woman, mm -hmm. the spirit is supposed to be an outside entity that comes to dwell in a person and can go. Mm -hmm. And that is why sometimes when it comes to traditional religion and uh, the priest would like to perform, they would have to sing to inspire the, the priest until the spirit takes possession. So when the spirit is not there, the priest cannot perform. But when it comes to witchcraft, it is supposed, and let me put that word, supposed mm -hmm. to be an inherent power, not something that comes from outside to dwell in a person, but inherent power. That is why traditionally, initially, the real traditional priest, you know, when it comes to traditional priests, what others call fetishism, fetish priests, mm -hmm. the concept too has changed. Initially, we had the traditional priest who knew herbs and who could heal diseases and other things. One, one British researcher called Margaret Field said that she examined the traditional priest and she said that from her perspective, they could heal witchcraft or witches. By that, she was saying that she thought some people were uh, somehow sick. And um, those sickness could be associated with witchcraft, like um, somebody who was having a mental challenge, mental problem. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, she thought that those priests could heal them. You know, so traditional priests initially knew herbs and they could heal. But then we also had others coming from the neighboring countries that infiltrated Ghana. And they also brought their type of traditional uh, 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 priest, their type of, uh, uh, yeah, that, as I said, uh, priesthood. And when they came around, they are the people who said they could, they could actually uh, uh, exercise. Or if I put it in the Ghanaian, we catch witches. Mm -hmm. And when they brought that concept, it really affected our tradition. And that brought about less hand for a witch. Initially, that wasn't how it was done at all. Mm. Yeah, the character of a person may cause that person to be accused of witchcraft. So what, what are those characters? Or what are those attributes that are associated with witchcraft that we see people and we say that this person is a witch or that person is a witch? Initially, someone may be accused of witchcraft. If the person, for instance, saw a young boy playing and um, said that you, you are a very bad boy, you are, going to, you, you are going to break your legs. And then they realize that indeed the leg has been broken. Maybe another person is a, 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 a pregnant woman. And then the, the person comes in and says that you, you are not going to give birth. You are going to abort. And then it happens. And maybe chatting with, with let's say, the uncle or somebody in the house and say, Oh, we are paying money. You are a very bad man. When you go to the farm, uh, 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 maybe uh, the tree will fall on you. Mm -hmm. And then a tree falls on that person. You know, when something like this happens, then they will say that, no, this man or this woman has a very bad spirit in, 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 in her or in him. Mm. She could be a witch. And the person will be sermoned to uh, the palace. So it was, initially it was the chief who was, the, who was dealing with witchcraft. And then they would have to examine, the chief and his people would have to examine the, the character and the issues, the accusation. And when the person was found guilty, then they would give the person a firebrand. Put the firebrand in, in, in his hand or her hand mm -hmm. and ask the person to leave the village. The person will not be killed. The person will not be killed. Ask the person to leave the village. The village. Mm. Uh, in Chi, they will say, mm -hmm. so the person will leave the village. If it was something that was minor and not a major one, as I've said, and they thought that the person was a witch, then the person would be referred to a traditional priest. And then the priest will mix herbs and try to heal that person. And they, they had a word saying that they will be able to minimize the powers of the witch. You will cut the nails. You better to Nintabai, pluck the, the, the feathers so that that person could not function again. So that was their belief at that time. But then when it changed, and I say neighboring, I, uh, neighboring um, fetish came in, then they began, they, they began to miss their beliefs with our system, and they, they started hunting for witches and claim to exercise witchcraft. That brought what we are seeing today. Is that something that is peculiar only to us here in ghana only to us here in africa or even the world over we had this phenomenon of accusations of witchcraft and the belief in witchcraft existing it's not only in ghana it is very strong in africa mm. in fact until recently what has just happened i yes. thought that the concept had minimized in ghana mm -hmm. but in other part of africa some of them continue to hunt for witches and kill them which is very bad then it came to the west it was very strong in the West in the uh, 14th, 15th, 16th century. These mm -hmm. things became very, very uh, powerful in the West. And they also began hunting for witches. But what caused them to stop is that some people were accused of witchcraft. Those people were executed. Then later, they began that they made a mistake. And the, 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 the accusations level against them were not true. No, and these things helped them gradually. And then they had to abandon that belief system mm. no. the, this, this brings me back to my question because mm -hmm. of the, the precedent that mm -hmm. you have given of whether or not it is real mm -hmm. these beliefs that people have because of certain things that they've seen mm -hmm. for example you mentioned if someone says you're a bad person when mm -hmm. you go to the bush a tree will mm -hmm. fall on you 
and something like that happens, mm -hmm. then they begin to believe that this person really is a witch or has a certain spirit. Mm -hmm. Is it real or is it just coincidence that some of these things happen? Mm -hmm. Or is it just our superstitious beliefs? Yeah, as I said, there are many superstitions on witchcraft. Many of the things that they claim are not true. And many, many of these things are very, very evil. Mm. You know, but within humanity, you see, um, if you do something against another person, mm -hmm. whether the person is a Christian or not, whether the person is a Muslim or not, if the person, for instance, does something good for you, and, and you begin to attack that person, and the person said, oh, are you the person who has done this thing against me? Despite all the things that I've said, there is something within human being we call soul. Once the person is really offended and wish you evil, something evil may happen to you. Really? That is why, you see, that is why the Bible is saying that children should obey their fathers, their parents, so that they will live long. You know, because parents have brought you up. And if you do not respect them and you do something that really affects your father or mother, and the mother says, ah, kweku, something evil may happen to you. Really? So there is, the, this, the soul within people mm. are powerful. Powerful in the sense that everybody, now I'm talking of, gen, uh, I'm making it general, generic. Mm. <laughs> so if you do something like that and it becomes often, Wishing people like that, then people begin to accuse uh, and then of witchcraft. So this aspect is there. But I, I, as I said, I would have liked a very uh, uh, enough time to build theories and practices until I come to that realization is whether there's witchcraft or there's not witchcraft. And what is witchcraft? Mm. So <laughs> some of these beliefs mm -hmm. that people have, mm -hmm. what is the root cause of it? What is the genesis? How did people come to begin to accept that these things exist or these things are there witchcraft demons spirit and what have you and because of that we see some of the actions that we are seeing today you say people don't want to take responsibilities for their failures no um and their inabilities so once somebody fails to succeed in something that he or she wants and um then the person begins to find faults. What caused this? Then somebody comes in and tells you that this person might have done that. Or the, the reason for your failure might have been this. They easily believe it. Mm -hmm. When someone is sick, the person is ill. The person has gone to the hospital. The doctors have tried. And then they have not been able to diagnose the specific illness come out with, with a resource. The person may think that may, there is something behind. And that is why someone was sick. He went to the, the doctor. The doctor was able to cure him. But he has not been, uh, di his has not been able to be even diagnosed until the person is cured. So they begin to find reasons for some of the things they don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. And, and it cuts across. Sometimes we see Christians, uh, we see Muslims, you see educated people and those who are not educated. Let, let me even tell you that. Mm -hmm. And this is very, very practical. You know, my, my, my first driver, you know, worked with me. And then um, um, when he married for about three or four years, they are not giving birth. He visited one doctor and the doctor could not diagnose the cause. So the doctor told him that, you see, I know your father. He was referring to me. He will not advise you to visit a prayer camp or a prayer center. But with your case, I haven't seen anything. Unless you visit a prayer center, you are not going to have a, a, a child. But thank God that he was very strong in his faith and said, no, 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 no. I believe I have a God. I don't need to go to any place. Mm. And then he told me the story. I refer him to another doctor. And when he went, it was a low sperm issue. And lo and behold, he has given birth until even uh, he prayed that uh, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't want, want children anymore. anymore. Yes. Family planning. Yes. Mm. You see. So when people don't get resource, mm -hmm. then they try to accuse others 
for their followers. Mm. Yeah. So is, is, is that what it is with the relationship between witchcraft and our culture and certain cultural beliefs? Because we don't understand or because we want to blame somebody else for problems that we have, then we resort to accusing people of witchcraft or attributing certain events to witchcraft. Yeah, I, 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 I believe that most of the things that are happening are because we do not understand. We do not understand. And because we do not understand and we are trying to find meanings to what are happening, then we accuse others of, of witchcraft. Why is it that we come from the same family. Someone's uh, children are progressing, mm -hmm. and my children are not progressing. I then try to accuse my auntie for being a witch. Mm -hmm. So we, because we do not understand issues, we often accuse others for our, this, uh, uh, our feelings. So, yeah. Let's dovetail into the religion aspect and mm -hmm. even maybe focus on Christianity. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship there between religion mm -hmm. and witchcraft mm -hmm. or witch demonology all right as well, you would like to put it sometimes yes you see as i said initially it was a, the, the the chief who was dealing with witchcraft and then it left the hands of the chief to so-called priest in akan we have some type of priest that we called uh, abosma brafo you know a brafo uh, those people who are brought for are those with chiefs who were supposed to kill others. So if you say uh, uh, Abosuma Brafo, they are the, 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 the priests who claim that they have power to catch witches or to exorcise them and deal with them. You know, so when these people started dealing with witchcraft, their dealings were very violent. Sometimes they would gather and then perform and say that somebody is a witch. Even the chiefs one, there are others that that time may not permit me. How it developed into evil before mm -hmm. these people came in. Mm -hmm. And so when they started uh, arresting witches and tried to deal with them, uh, um, the, the colonial government uh, instituted a law. In fact, they, they brought in a law uh, banning an accusation of witchcraft in the country. And it has continued ahead. It has continued up to today. So when that one uh, 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 was instituted uh, then it shifted from the priest to Christianity when Christianity came uh, 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 to Ghana mm -hmm. so that um, and it, it started with the then churches we call spiritual churches when they also claimed that they will be able to arrest witches and then deal with them so it went to the spiritual churches and then as it grew and Pentecostalism became strong in Ghana too and then charismatic Christianity develop within, within Pentecostalism, mm -hmm. some aspect of them claim that they will also be able to deal with witches. And that is why we have these sort of prophets who will continue to accuse others of witchcraft and try to deal with them. So they brought that aspect of um, demon possession. You see, in the Bible, if you come to the New Testament, you wouldn't see Jesus Christ dealing with witchcraft. No. Mm -hmm. But we have Jesus dealing with demons. Yeah. So when some people read the Gospels, they associate demons with witchcraft. And so when they are talking of demons, uh, when they are talking of witchcraft, they may, be, they may be talking of demons. And that is where the amalgamation comes from. The combination of witchcraft and demons come from. Mm -hmm. So um, as Christians try, some Christians try to cast out demons and associate them with witchcraft, the, the practices grew. And you see, when you begin to tell people about witchcraft-related issues, mm -hmm. they become very much interested. And they think that people who claim to have powers to exercise witches are very powerful. And then they will have following. And then they will begin to consult them. And consultation, what I call divinity consultation, Ebisa, is very strong in our culture. So once people realize that, uh, wait, they say this person is very powerful. If I go there, my problems will be solved. That is where some have used Christianity to deceive others in the nation and other nations too. Mm. And, you know, you, you, you wrote in one of the works that you've done. Mm -hmm. I read a portion of it. And mm -hmm. you said that almost all churches include exorcist activities mm -hmm. referred to as deliverance in mm -hmm. their programs. 
since failure to do so amounts to losing members to churches that you know include or don't include mm -hmm. such activities right. so coming on the back of this and this is something that you wrote yeah uh, in in a research work that yeah. you did how is the church complicit in promoting superstition witchcraft or witch demonology um you say when pentecostalism came to africa people accepted it because uh, pentecostals initially believed that once you have the holy spirit in you witches can't attack you mm -hmm. and they cannot destroy you even if people cast spells on you it will not work you have power to demoralize all the powers of of the evil one and and that was working that is why pentecostals will pray for people to have the baptism of the holy spirit and speak in tongues for pentecostals the initial evidence of the holy ghost baptism is speaking in tongues so they did that then within pentecostalism arose what we called the charismatic movement and the, when the charismatic movement came out some of them started handling demonology they, they brought some sort of new awareness of demonology and saying that you can be a Christian, you can be born again, the Holy Spirit can be in you. Still, there may be some ancestral cases in you. Unless you are able to identify them and cast them out, you will not progress. So this thing minimizes the Pentecostal concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that it came with power, and you had power to destroy all the evil powers of, of the devil. So this one to send people back to the time where you need to consult someone else for healing, for deliverance, or for other things. And so when these practices started, and people started prayer centers, deliverance ministry, many people were flocking in. Mm. And then the other churches also believed that well. Now Pentecostals are growing, and they, they are speaking of the power of the Holy Spirit. So they also saw the power of the Holy Spirit. Then some among them too, centered their issues on deliverance uh, finding ancestral cases and then casting them out and and when they started such issues they, they they also went to the extreme as some of the pentecostals also went uh, had excesses so the excesses grew and the excesses are what are causing troubles now and i think that that concept of you can be a christian you can be born again uh, the Holy Ghost, you can have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, yet unless you find out the cases in your family or ancestral cases in your family, you cannot progress. That is a very bad teaching, and that goes against the Bible. But it's not true. It's not true. That's very common. Yeah, it's not A lot true. of ch churches teach yeah. it, a lot of churches preach it, yeah. a lot of prophets and yeah. men of God, when you go for prayer mm -hmm. sessions, are saying this thing. Mm -hmm. You hear terms like generational curses, yeah. curses from your mother's hometown, mm -hmm. from your father's hometown, something that your forefathers have done, mm -hmm. among other things. Mm -hmm. And when you hear some of the prayer lines, mm -hmm. you hear people saying things like, whatever generational curses or whatever th thing is coming from my mother's hometown, mm -hmm. my father's hometown, we break it by fire, clapping of hands, and prayer. Mm -hmm. You are saying that this, 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 is, this is bad. It's a false teaching. You see... When you come to the Bible, if you become a Christian, you are a new creation. All things have passed away. And the Bible says, behold, all things have become new. Now, the basis of what they say comes from Exodus 20. If you come to Exodus 20, verses 4, 5, and 6. No, he was saying that curses will follow generations up to the fourth or fifth generation of those who hate me. But they forget that if you continue, he says that, but God extends his love to thousands of generations. But even when he was talking of those who, uh, curses that will follow people, he said that for those who hate me. Mm. So in other words, if you have accepted the Lord and you have re re repented of whatever you, you did mm -hmm. and you do not hate the Lord, the curses of the parents can follow you because it only follows those people who hate the Lord. But if you love the Lord and you have acknowledged him as your Lord and personal Savior, then you no longer hate him. So you have been taken from that old stand to the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. You have now become a new creature. 
and you have because you have become a new creature you are now a child of god and the blessings of god should follow you so those who are touching on i wonder why people like curses more than blessings because in that pas- passage the curses are very few but the blessings are more there but people would rather think that well my parent maybe my was an adult worshiper and and now the curse of adult worshiping will follow me no if i do not hate the lord by acknowledging jesus as my lord and personal savior by loving him then i myself by my belief have broken that case but there are prophets there are men of god who say mm-hmm. they see into the realms of the spirit mm-hmm. and they see something that your ancestors have done mm-hmm. or they see something or a certain pact or covenant that your father or your grandfather had with a certain shrine mm-hmm. and it is causing a hindrance maybe in your progress and so you are not getting your breakthrough which god has ordained for you mm-hmm. and so we need to pray use anointing oil to to break that particular case or to break that bondage to set you free are these men of God not seeing, you know, yeah, yeah, I, into I, the realms of the spirit, or are they not prophesying mm-hmm. the truth? So I, I become very concerned when people minimize the blood of Jesus and the death of Jesus. When they begin to tell some of these things, of course, God reveals issues to people. But once the Lord has said that, once you come to Him, you are a new creature. You become a new person. The old things have passed away. The Lord is not going to say that because your fathers worship idols and you have turned away, he will still, you would have to find somebody to actually diagnose the, the curses that were in your family and then break it before you be set free. No, 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 no. He's a loving God and who keeps to his promises. So most of these things, some of them, are only uh, imagination. Really? In fact, I can even say that some are only trying to claim power for themselves. Mm. I can go to that extent and say that some are only trying to claim power for, for themselves. And, and most of them too are uh, imagination. Once you press hard, you realize that there is nothing like that. You just stand. If there's an issue, you know, for instance, if you are a Christian, you are a manager and you do not manage your things well, mm. you're not going to be successful. If you are even as a husband, as a couple, if you don't manage your resources well, you keep on buying things because others have also purchased them. You, you want to compete with others, you are going to fail. So you don't have to compare yourself with others. But if you fail in this sense, you may accuse somebody, perhaps the old lady in your family. So the people who believe these prophets mm-hmm. and these men of God, mm-hmm. what is it with them? Is it that they are lazy and they want to attribute every negative thing in their life to something. That is why they wholeheartedly believe and consult these mm-hmm. men of God to find solutions to their problems. Is it, I mean, is it laziness or lazy Christians? What is it? You see, when people are suffering, they become very vulnerable. When people are suffering, if somebody is sick and has gone to the hospital without a cure, the person becomes very vulnerable. If somebody is studying and the person could not, uh, can't pass his or her exams, he becomes vulnerable. A business person who is not succeeding becomes vulnerable. So most of them prey on their vulnerability, their weaknesses, and then bring some of these issues out. And then um, some of them, as you are saying to, uh, uh, do not, for me, those who are able to read the Bible are not accepting the word of God as it is. Because if you read the word of God, some of these things are very clear in, but they are not acknowledging the word of God as it is and claim it for themselves. And then others do think that. You see, when we come to Christianity, we are the same. You are a child of God. I'm a child of God. Uh, Then my call, God has given me an additional responsibility of having an apostolic ministry. But when we come to God, we are all equal. But with the additional responsibility that he has g- given to me, too, I'm going to be responsible to God. And I'm going to account to him. And I think that people do not know that God loves me and he loves you and all of us are the same before God. And therefore, if I pray to God, he will answer me. If you pray to God, too, he will answer you. So in this sense, some people are lazy in the sense that they want cheap Christianity. Cheap Christianity? Yeah, instead of praying himself or herself, mm-hmm. 
He thinks that when someone prays for him, God will hear it more than praying for himself, which is wrong. God listens to the prayer of everybody, anyone who opens their heart and pray. God, God, God hears the person. Let me tell you this short story. When I, I started uh, the ministry at Wa in Upper West region, mm -hmm. and in one of my villages, somebody was an idol uh, worshiper and then accepted Christ. A woman, two weeks' time, she lost her baby. And he said that, no, Jesus, uh, people will say that because I left my idol worship and then came to you, that is why this child has died. They will say that it is, it, is the, it is the idol that has killed this baby from me. So please bring this baby back to life. Just, just talking to God. I, when I heard it, I was very happy. Mm. She came to testify. She just spoke to Jesus that way. And the baby was brought back to life. You see, simple prayer. It wasn't a pastor. It wasn't an apostle, a bishop, or a, a prophet. But the woman herself speaking to God. This is Christianity knowing God as your father and then speaking to God as your father. And, and we have lost even the content of prayer, the aspect of prayer. People think that if you don't jump, if you don't roll, if you don't go here and there, don't clap your hands, clap your hands, stomp your pray, feet. Yeah, they don't think God will, God will hear you. We don't speak to our father like that. But maybe I call those things that exercise. Maybe they are doing exercise. And uh, God understands us and knows our weaknesses. He wouldn't say that because you don't understand and you pray that way, if you are praying for, from your heart, he wouldn't hear you. He will still hear them mm -hmm. because he's a loving God and knows and understands us. <laughs> so what, what then becomes the role of some of these men of God or prophets, if I can put it that way? Because a lot of the pray for me that we see is attributed to prophets mm -hmm. who can see mm -hmm. into the spiritual realms. Right. And then tell you what to pray on. Tell you the source of your problem. Or tell you the blessings that God has for you. And what you should. So they need to pray for you or pray with you. With some anointing oil and all of that. So what then really is the role of the, of the prophet? Yeah, alright. Most of them are, are divinity consultants. <laughs> divinity consult consultants. Consultants. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, you see. The role of the prophet the role of the apostle, the role of the bishop, the role of the pastor should be to train others and equip them for the work of the ministry. They should tell you um, who God is, train you in such a way that you will be able to do the aspect of God's work, witnessing to people, supporting the work of God from many angles, through offerings, helping the needy, and and propagating the gospel and bringing others. They should be able to train you until you are built up in the sense that you will be able to bring others to the kingdom. We are not supposed to say this is... In the New Testament, all of us have been given the Spirit of God. So as I'm here, the Spirit of God lives in you. You being a Christian, the Spirit of God lives in you. And once the Spirit of God lives in us, we can speak to God. We don't need somebody... To say that I have to find out the curses behind. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a wrong, let me put it, another wrong belief system that has entered Christianity and that is destroying the effectiveness of the power of the New Testament. So where is it entering Christianity from? Is, it, is, is, is the antecedents based on, on our culture? Like you explained earlier, yeah. the genesis of our belief system yeah. and our superstition and what have you. Is that why it is coming from and it has translated amalgamation of many things amalgamation of many things from our culture from a misunderstanding of the old testament from the let's say sometimes from the gospels if you read the gospels and you see jesus casting out uh, evil spirit if you are not careful to you you read many things uh, into it so mm -hmm. many things combination of many things and 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 that have um, come to that climax. So I think part of our culture, part of the Old Testament, the understanding of the Old Testament, and even uh, some parts of, of the New Testament, all of these things. And then you see other things to, um, how can I put it? Sometimes some people with mental challenges claim to have powers. You see, even if we come to 
real Akan culture. Let me tell you this. Oh, Mrs. Sechumesi. Ah, madam. Ah, mane dam na anti ankwa. Enka akom. Ama. Akom is spirit possession. Where people claim to be very powerful and do it. And then, the story that, the, the proverb that I've told you says that. One time there was a man called Chumesi. And then he became mad. And then later on that mind, mindness left him. And then he started spirit possession. Mm -hmm. And begin to tell people oracles. So you see here, even that possession, traditional possession, is linked with mental challenges. So sometimes, some people with mental challenges begin to say that, I've seen God. Psychiatric problems. They, they will begin to say that, I've seen God. Jesus has spoken to me. This is an issue. This is an issue. And then they begin to tell others uh, stories. I've seen this. I've seen this. And they may be seeing things real. But that may be double personality. You know? Um, and, and once they have such challenges and begin to say things, others pick them. And then they miss it with their Christianity. Even somebody saw this. He said that. He said that. He said that. When I was making the research, I met someone who said that when they were um, um, casting out a demon, mm -hmm. the demon said that. They said, you are a witch? He said, yes, I'm a witch. Is it true? Yeah, I'm a witch. What have you done? How many people have you killed? No, I haven't killed people as such. But my major, the major issue that I have done is that I'm guilty of drinking the blood of Jesus. So, me boni amaya ni se Yesu mojano anumbi. You know, this one you can see that he's a Christian. She is, she is a Christian who has psychic problem, mental disorder, and then maybe because in the church services we often say that this is the blood of Jesus. Come and drink. This thing has entered into the mind of the the, the, the woman. And as she was being pressurized to say something, then she said that I'm guilty of drinking the blood of Jesus. And the people were, were saying, yes, she's a demon, she's a witch. They could not understand. So some, some things also come from those who have mental challenges. Is, is that how you explain a common phenomenon that we see in some of, some of the churches and some of the prayer camps where someone is being prayed for Maybe a demon is being exorcised and the demon supposedly or the witchcraft supposedly manifests in the person and the person starts speaking and confessing sins. I am a demon. I did this to my mother. I did this to my brother. I did this to my sister. Tonight I'm going to do this and all kinds of things. Most of them. How do you explain that? Yeah, as you are saying, most of them come from psychic problems. Those who are having mental uh, challenges. Some of them. Most of them. You see, and some of them even real. Some yeah, of them real. Let him bring you see, and some of them to even those people who claim to be traditional priests and prophets mm -hmm. also are people who have some mental challenges. You see, if people begin to slap others and do all sorts of things that are very, very peculiar, standing on others, they may be having mental challenges and, and they will be hearing some voices. You know, they will be hearing some voices, and because they hear some voices, they will be obeying. The, 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 the voices and that will be causing trouble so these are some of the things and you see when you are talking you may say something that is true or appears true because uh, once people have got it and you begin to, to speak something may touch somebody but it doesn't mean that you have actually seen that thing from the spiritual realms it may be psychological issue it may be coincidence so how then do we situate exorcism and deliverance sessions in Christianity? How do we situate it? Because almost every church that I've been to, they have deliverance service. They have, you know, services where you pray and spirits supposedly manifest and they have to cast out the demons and the spirit. Where do we situate that in Christianity? Yeah, you see, um, sometimes um, counterfeit, counterfeit comes from the real issue because there are the, 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 the practical issue is there or the real issue is there. The devil can occasionally or often, not even occasionally, uh, try to attempt to follow 
what is real. So we have, you see, there are some people who may be truly be possessed with demons, evil spirit. Who? So that is there. Yeah, it is real. Yeah, it is real. Evil spirits. Yeah, I mean Jesus cast out evil spirit. So if you come to the Bible, you see that uh, uh, Jesus cast out evil spirit. So they, 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 some people may be possessed, and you can command them. And that one, uh, once you become, you see, and that, that is why, well, I'm a classical Pentecostal. Uh, that is why I stand on the Pentecostal belief that you are born again, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because you are now baptized in the Holy Spirit, we believe that the Spirit of God has come to dwell in you. And therefore, demons cannot enter you. As a Pentecostal pastor, mm. I've cast out evil spirits. But most of these issues came from those people who were not Christians. You know, um, they were not people who had been baptized in the Holy Spirit, as we put it. You know, they bring a person to you, you command the Spirit, and then the Spirit leaves. But it's not a matter of associating, uh, bringing Christians who are born again, who are baptized, and say that because you are facing challenges, it is associated with ancestral cases. No, you would have to live the Christian life. But many people have challenges. We, they bring them to us, and then we pray for them. They are exercised, they are delivered, and then you have to pray for the person to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then live the practical Christian life. So that is where I, I draw the difference. Mm. What does the Bible say about witchcraft or what does the bible teach mm -hmm. about witchcraft yeah you see when you you actually come to the bible and um um even from the the old testament it was the old testament that mentions witchcraft mm -hmm. briefly when, when now, you go to mm -hmm. exodus chapter 22 yes. i mean exodus chapter 22 verses mm -hmm. 18 it says mm -hmm. uh, you shall not permit a sorceress to live yeah. Whoever lies with a beast shall be put to death. Okay, the, the 18 specifically mm -hmm. talks about sorcery. Yeah. I mean, some other text or versions, uh, it will say witchcraft or witches. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is the King James Version that uses uh, 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 witches. Witchcraft. Yes, yeah. witches. It, it uses uh, witches. You yes. shall not permit Female witches, witches yes. Yes. to live. Yes. So it, isn't the Bible saying yeah. or teaching about witchcraft yes and and that is why i say that you see when it said witches yes even the new king james uses sorceress mm -hmm. um new king james then all other versions use sorceress so here it is not our concept of witchcraft it was the king james when king james uh, uh set out some people to interpret to translate the bible into english at that time it was during this witch hunt crazy period in 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 the western world that they wrote it and so they instead of translating the word as sorceress they use witchcraft because witchcraft concept was very strong at the time but sorcery is dif different sorcery is the manipulation of spirits and other things to cause harm what we will but say is that, that is it that witchcraft no is it's it not witchcraft what we it's, see as witchcraft here no it's, it's sorcery is what we call the tree bible you use uh and tough way for the ebeka said it for almost two a drew casting spells on people into a more almost two and crawl for a drew yes will be two be a do in tough way for that is the key the key version you see if i pick the key version and read it yeah, and i'm happy that uh, the key version has brought it in tough way for so it's sorcery sorceress and that is the concept. Mm. And when you come to the New Testament, you realize that, uh, apart from Revelation, the only place that we have the word witchcraft is Galatians 5, 7, mm -hmm. 17, when he was talking about the deeds of the flesh, Galatians 5. And when he was describing the deeds of the flesh, then it used even uh, a witchcraft. And even there too, it's related with witchcraft. The term comes from pharmacy, who deals with sorcery mm -hmm. and other things. Mm -hmm. But even there too, you realize that he was talking of the deeds of the flesh. So he did not even relate it to the spirit. But when you look at this text mm -hmm. in Exodus, you shall not permit the sorcerers mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it give fuel to uh, the belief that 
witchcraft is bad or the sorcery and things are bad and that people who practice it don't deserve to live yeah, that they need to die y- yes is that, it- that is why even culturally mm-hmm. we are seeing that people are lynching people who are believed to be sorcerers or perceived to be witches mm-hmm. or having these powers and what are you see it that is why i say is the misunderstanding the lord um, god revealed himself to the people of israel as yahweh and he wanted them to serve him alone so if somebody brought in sorcery trying to attempt to worship other gods trying to employ spirits mm. to cause harm to people he or she was drawing the people's attention from the lord so from the old testament concept he was saying that that person should not be allowed to live so here it wasn't the witchcraft we are talking of that is supposed to be an inherent power within somebody but sorcery that is the employment of spirits to cause harm to other people doesn't it still apply today because people still practice sorcery today don't they no it does not apply you see uh, there are many things in the old testament that are not ap- <laughs> being applied now as the law started dealing with israel as an example of humanity he started gradually this was this this was the period where killing executions and many many things were very uh, uh, common so he started dealing with them progressively pointing to a time that the messiah the christ the savior of the world will come so when jesus christ came he actually explained the concept of god and the person of god to as clearly saying that now even with your enemy what you have to do is to love your enemy and try to show love to your enemy by trying to bring him to the knowledge of god so no in the new testament we don't have this thing god has revealed himself gradually and now you see the character of god clearly in our lord jesus christ mm. so today when someone is practicing sorcery or someone is practicing witchcraft mm-hmm. really how do you tell the difference then witchcraft sorcery how do you identify it that this is not witchcraft and this is sorcery? yeah that is why i'm saying that the common issues that that is happening in ghana now is the combination of the two okay the two are now combined. which you termed which yeah which i term which demonology mm-hmm. it's a combination because people when they are talking of witchcraft they wouldn't know the difference when you are mm-hmm. talking so can you give us that distinction but yeah that is what i'm saying that witchcraft is supposed to be something that is inherent potent within the person it, it dwells in the person that's what the belief is and then demon possession possession is supposed to be a spirit entity mm-hmm. that lives in a person but the the question that you are asking is that um what should we deal with a person now whenever you see that somebody goes astray you should approach the person with the word of god the power of god to help that person the power of god to exercise him from any evil act or deliver him from evil act once the person is able to acknowledge jesus as his or her her lord and personal uh, savior jesus will forgive that person of all the sins and then comes uh, uh, come to dwell he will come to dwell in that person and give him salvation so we should bring the love of jesus to all those people who are doing that and that is why even i said that even in the new testament mm-hmm. sorcery and even witchcraft if you put it was put uh, into the list of the the deeds of mm-hmm. the flesh mm-hmm. so you approach the person with the love of god mm-hmm. now I, i'm curious to know because one of the reasons why mm-hmm. we decided to have this conversation comes mm-hmm. on the back of what you referred to earlier the lynching of that 90 year old woman mm-hmm. so, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen that video yeah quite uh, how do you explain that based on the conversation that we've had what happened a priest mm-hmm. describing somebody as a witch calling the person out blaming the person for misfortunes of the of the of the community mm-hmm. and then lynching the woman yeah it is it's, it's a very in fact when i saw it i said no this is a sad day for ghana dark period and very shameful you see um, a 90 year woman being lynched others surrounding this woman being beaten up until she died you see why should it happen because of the false belief system they are thinking that the woman is the cause of their problem which is not true and then they are believing what this uh, traditional priestess is saying 
which also is evil. No, somebody claiming that I have power, I can exercise and using all sort of things, even others, I mean, I can, I can kill. And then they believe her, accusing many people of witchcraft, which is completely wrong. And which is against our law. She shouldn't, they shouldn't have allowed her. But those people who were around thought that what the woman was saying was true. And then others say that well, if he's not a witch, then something should have happened. Which are all wrong. So it's a false belief system. Why is it that not even one person, not even two people could be bold enough and take the woman away from that? Some say that well, once you take the woman, maybe they will come on you, they will think that you are entertaining witchcraft. Mm. So even those people who would like to go and deliver some person will be associated with stigma. That no, 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 the person even doesn't believe what this woman. But why should you believe her? And let me even tell you that even when I was researching into witchcraft, mm -hmm. I was stigmatized. That, oh, why should the pastor, an apostle of the Church of Pentecost, begin to research into witchcraft? And demonology. And the, and yes, the, there were that. many, many things. Yeah. If I did not know what I was doing, I would have stopped. You know, so I, why should this thing happen? False belief system false belief system and then because they claim that witchcraft is spiritual and the woman will be saying spiritual things and some of you could not understand so others will leave that woman to deceive them under the guises of spirituality which is wrong even spiritual issues are examined you see spiritual issues are examined once you be, be, begin to question people they say he doesn't believe in witchcraft he doesn't believe in that and we should not allow them to use that one to oppress us. We have to question the issue. Mm. Scholars, some well-educated people follow these people. And that is one of my problems. You see some politicians, mm -hmm. some uh, royals, chiefs and queens, yes. and, uh, approaching some of these people who are, who are false, some of them. But you see them following them from oracles. Mm. So you, you talk about examining this. So if yeah. a man of God mm -hmm. or a prophet tells you that, I have seen this about you, or the Lord has revealed this about you to mm -hmm. me. And because of that, you even have to do this acquaint chair. Mm -hmm. How do you examine that? Or how do you test the authenticity of that claim? You see, when he tells you and you don't feel it, tell the person that I'm going to pray. You say you have seen this, all right, I'll pray about it too. And then if you pray about it and you think he's deceiving, you say, No, 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 I don't accept it. I will not do anything. What is the acquaintance? And th what I'm telling you too is a true story. Somebody, so-called prophet, was invited into a household and um, where there was one of our members. And excuse me, some of the people who were in the household too were Church of Pentecost members. And then those people had to make a circle. And the prophet started telling them, giving them what you say, Akwanchire, this, you will like, be like that, you will be like this, you will be like that. And then when it came to this lady called fear. She said that you, you are not going to complete your school because you are going to get pregnant. She said, I don't believe you. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Church of Pentecost member. I don't believe what you are saying. I was forced here by my grandma. I wouldn't have even been here. I don't accept what you are saying. You are a false prophet. And then all of them started speaking against this girl. Mm. She told her that I will complete my education and I want to do medicine. Now she has completed and she's a doctor. In fact, she didn't time, get pregnant. She didn't get pregnant. And the time that uh, 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 she told me this story, she was uh, uh, reading medicine at Kolebu. It was Kolebu that she told me the story because I went there for checkup. And she was one of our PENSA, Church of Pentecost Students and Associates member around. So they came around and then she told me that story. And I didn't know what to do. I just wish I could carry her mm. on my back. Mm. And, and I think that was the, the, my best moment uh, as a chairman of the Church of Penny. When I heard that, I said, yes, some people have caught my ministry. At least I've got one woman, one, lit, one young lady who has understood it. So don't let them deceive you. When they say it, as a Christian, some, some of them, once you know that it's false, you can challenge them. So how them. will you know? This because girl, it, it, seems, she know? it seems as though a lot of Christians, a lot of people are gullible. Yeah. People feel that you have to put yourself under a man of God's mm -hmm. tutelage or a man of God's direction mm -hmm. for your life mm -hmm. to know the plans that God has for your life mm -hmm. so that it is revealed to you 
and then you know what to do or the steps to take towards achieving that vision that has been revealed to the man of God. People believe this. And like you rightly mentioned, that is why you see politicians and you know chiefs and what have you go to men of God to go and seek this this acquaintance. So how do you not no. know? <laughs> yeah, I th- yeah, I think one of the greatest responsibilities of pastors, ministers, is that we have to teach our people to know the Bible, what the Word of God says, and accept it for themselves. You no, know, once we are able to teach them, it's, it's, it's for lack of knowledge, my people perish. So these people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. So if you are able to ground them, disciple them, in the word of God, and they become strong, then they'll be able to resist some of these issues. You see, um, and let them know that it doesn't mean that once somebody tells you something, it is true. Mm-hmm. That I've seen this thing about you, it is true. You, as a Christian, too, should pray. And what is God telling you? And if you, you pray about it and you realize that you can't accept it, your spirit doesn't accept it, don't take it. And even if you think that what he has said is true, pray about it. His God, if his God is the true God, then it's your your God. And because he's your God, if you pray to him, he will also speak to you. He will strengthen you. So it's a lack of knowledge. We have not been able to disciple the people up to the level of this young girl. I was very worried when she had her wedding. And I didn't hear of it. And when I came back and heard, he said I had traveled. I said, no, I had wanted actually to attend your wedding, to mm. honor you mm. because of your faith in the Lord. Mm. For, so it is lack of teaching. We need to disciple our people. So what then is the similarity between this kind of acquainture mm-hmm. that prophets give and sorcery? Yeah. or div- divinity or yeah, whatever, divi- what I call whatever divinity it is called. consultation. Because there, there are all kinds of directions that are given mm. bring salt put it on your feet bring water i'll pray over the water put it there for two days add oil to it mm-hmm. and then later on drink it sprinkle this uh, holy water or holy oil around your house and put some on your head uh, bring candles do this all kinds of you know aquanture and this is coming from god and then they say that jesus christ even did this when he was healing the sick because he was healing a blind man mm-hmm. and he took sand or mud he spat into it the form mud put it on the blind man's eyes and then washed it away mm-hmm. and then the blind man could see mm-hmm. so there's nothing wrong with a country a country mm-hmm. how do you explain this yeah as you said the difference between a country yes and then a divinity and consultation the, yes um um what i a pizza yes. yeah the, the difference between very close and situated to what these some of the men of god and prophets are doing are doing or telling people and then do. related to what jesus said yes all right so you realize that they are very very similar most of the things that they are doing were picked from this sort of abyssa that divinity cons- consultation aspect so the closeness is very very there however it is also close to prophecy you see in in prophetic message too we have something we called the word of knowledge and, 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 and that can help you to have vision or intuition about something, mm. which is very, very similar. But when you come to the Bible, from the old to the new, most of all the things that happened were relating to the people of God and, cons- and was in connection with the redemption that our Lord Jesus Christ was coming to us. Uh, was coming to give to us so in relation to the people of god that is in the old testament in the, the people of israel and then to redemption so god even if you come to it, one of the, the powerful one was samuel when he spoke about saul but saul was going to be a king mm-hmm. king of the people of israel mm-hmm. so still it was leading to the people of god and to their uh, redemption now if you come to what jesus did um um, the, 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 the miracle that he did by spitting on the, the ground, taking the spot, missing with mud and putting it, go and wash. And he did that one once. Yeah. Uh, and, and it speaks of his creative power. Speak of his creative power as the Messiah, as, as the one who is I am. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. who was there with the, uh, with in the beginning but he did it once you see that it wasn't a formula mm -hmm. he did it for a purpose but there was a time he told was it you told the 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 lep okay that was in jesus but one of the men of god told was it layman layman to go and wash himself in the river jordan yes. seven times yes and after that he'll be healed of his leprosy and he was healed and he was healed. and he never did that again you see still god can use people in our generation to do that but it does not become a paradigm you see the holy spirit sometimes paul uses apron people who touch paul were healed other times say he used his apron mm -hmm. and somebody was healed yes but it does not become a paradigm I, something that becomes an example that this is how you do it no uh, this is how you do it and, and and that is where the mistake comes from god can still use somebody to do something peculiar but that may be once it, it doesn't mean that because he used this thing once everybody should use it or when you use it always you would even uh, uh, pass no or you you'll be successful even when jesus asked the disciples to go and pray for others cast out uh, 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 evil spirit and heal the sick they went and they were successful when someone was brought to them the disciples were there they prayed it didn't work you see it doesn't mean that once god has used you once to do something that is what you need to do always no it's not a paradigm god continues to speak on daily basis and he would like us to accept him as you take manna on daily basis just pray to him on daily basis and you meet your needs according to the day mm. <laughs> so all this 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 a quench wash your feet with salt <laughs> uh, when you are coming to church tomorrow bring anointing oil when you are coming to church the next day bring vinegar all kinds of things that that that, that no. is not something which should be encouraged or yeah, more it, they, they should not be encouraged it's, not, it's not necessary it's false yeah. teaching yeah they are not necessary and and they should not be encouraged you see what we need to encourage our people these days is for them to read the word of god on daily basis now even for those people who cannot read you can even listen to the word of god you no know, once somebody knows the word of god the person would not have to go and seek a country from somebody. So the country and those things should be discouraged. They are those things that are promoting witchcraft related beliefs that we see what we are seeing. Mm. And I, we don't have to allow people to accuse others of witchcraft because the, the constitution of Ghana does not sanction that. Mm. So why should we encourage others to do that? And we have to discourage pastors who are also doing that and we should not patronize now i think that the patronage by key people including politicians chiefs well-educated people encourage them to continue to do that mm. so that's a leadership problem a leadership problem we'll get a bit more into that but you're still watching <laughs> gh today here <laughs> on gh1 television i'm in the studio this morning with apostle professor opoku enina he's the immediate past chairman of the church of pentecost and we've been having a very interesting conversation on witchcraft and superstition and the kind of impact it has on people when we return we'll begin to dovetail into the negative implications on this on our psyche as a nation and what we can do to get out of these kind of superstitious beliefs and witchcraft and what have you don't go anywhere